Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Indigo Communications. We are delighted to have you with us as we look ahead to the weekend's football and look back on an amazing night of European football in the company of Alan Ruff and Tam McManus. Scottish Cup semi-finals to look forward to. We'll also discuss all the breaking news today, but first and foremost, Ruffy, we've got to look back at what was quite simply a sensational European night for Rangers. The atmosphere, tremendous, and yet again, Rangers step up to the plate, albeit an extra time, to get themselves into the yeah, semi-final. Yeah, absolutely wonderful night for Rangers Football Club, the supporters, the players. You know, we, we said earlier, you know, they needed an early goal, you know, obviously being the goal behind, and they got it. Everything seems to be just falling for them every time they need something, they, they step up to the plate. Yeah, the late goal. Must have been a wee bit nervous after that, but I think it'd been an injustice if they were to take anything out of that game. I think on the whole, I think Rangers were top class from start to finish. Yeah, and of course the other thing about it, sometimes we have to we get a bit of direction from people who post messages to us on here, and Tommy, who's out there in Thailand, says, "Just tell your producer I want." 50 minutes of chat about how magnificent Rangers were last <laughs> night and then we'll maybe chat about five minutes each on the on the derbies at the weekend. Um, I think a lot of people share your view on that, Tommy, because quite simply, coming out of the traps, the first goal sensational because it doesn't, doesn't even look like an angle that he's capable of getting in the back of the net, but Tavernier steps up. No, listen, his goal-scoring record's fantastic for, for Rangers. I think he scored 78 or 79 goals for Rangers for, from right back. Yeah. Not a lot of them probably penalty kicks, but still, his, his goal-scoring record's f phenomenal for Rangers. And that was the start that Rangers needed, you know, to get Bragg under pressure. Bragg did not know, didn't know what hit them. You know, coming out the traps, Rangers, you know, first five, ten minutes were all over them, you know, putting them under pressure at the back. And then, obviously, the big the turning point in the game is uh, when Roof goes through and the boy... I think it's a harsh red card. I think he's trying to... Do you? Yeah, I do. I think it's a harsh oh. red card because, listen, the defender's trying to get out of the way. It's a penalty kick. He's clipped him. But I don't. I think he's made a genuine attempt to try and get the ball. Um, so I thought the red card was harsh. Definitely a penalty kick. And once that goes in, you're thinking Rangers could win this 3 or 4 nothing. And I thought they did make it a little bit hard for themselves the second half. You know, they didn't get that third goal to put them to bed. Yeah. And you always leave yourself liable to, from a set piece, and that's what happened to Braga. But... Extra time, you know, Rangers were comfortable, got the goal through the roof and uh, thoroughly deserved to get through. Well, interesting you mentioned that, Ruffy. I mean, I, I agree with Tam, they thoroughly deserved it. I mean, they hit the frame of the goal twice, they had three goals disallowed, albeit yeah, when you look back on it. I still think harsh on Barisic with that hand, but the, the letter of the law. But Tam just said there, you know, it, it was harsh on him because he made a genuine attempt to play the ball, but it's, it's denying the player a goal-scoring opportunity which yeah. is why he got the red card. Yeah, it's the wording of it, and you know that's why the referees make these kind of decisions. I, I, and I, I, I can see where Tom's coming from, but the referee wouldn't look at it like that. He'd look at it the rules of rules of the game, and uh, it's a penalty, and it's a, it's it's, a, it's an order and off. So, you know, but I, I agree with Tom. You know, they made it particularly hard for themselves, and that that goal going in, but. They, but I never had a shot at goal, really. I don't think Alan McGregor had any save to make. So they came with a plan, you know, that they would they would sit in and, and, and hope Rangers wouldn't score early. But Rangers scored early and they didn't have a plan B. Well, do you remember we were talking yesterday about, you were talking about Roof yeah. stepping up to the plate. But I, I think he's just been, it's not that he's got a newfound confidence. I think he knows now that he is getting that position as the starter. He's finishing. I mean, the chip for one of the goals that was disallowed was sublime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we saw it in that European game where he, he took on a couple of players a few months ago and then scored for a fantastic distance. He's, he's definitely got it in. I think the point we were all trying to make is if you'd asked a Rangers supporter, who would you rather have, Roof or Morelis? And they would go for Morelis, obviously. So, you know, he's, a, he's the only one that can change everybody's hearts and I'm sure that goal will do a big, big weight of that and obviously get into the semi-final at the weekend, he'll be absolutely buzzing. Yeah, well, I, I think the Rangers fans are buzzing and the manager, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, rightly so, just praising the players and summing up what an achievement it is. Well, it feels very big, very good at the moment. You know, it was a, you know, a game we wanted, the result we wanted. Um, you know, I think we started the game really well. Uh, a lot of, lot of pressure up front, a lot of chances we created. And uh, you know, I'm just happy we are we are true. It's a big achievement uh, to be in the last four of, uh, of, of in, in Europe, and uh, really proud of the performances of my team. 
Yeah, I, I think the manager deserves some credit here, Tom, because if in this country I always think sometimes we are guilty of a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction sometimes, but if he was under a bit of pressure with the... the the defeats in the old firm games, then he deserves credit for guiding Rangers uh, to the semi-finals. No, he does, and I think he got his tactics spot on last night. You know, he played Aribo just in behind the striker. He moved him in one, Ramsey played. You know, so I thought the, his tactics were excellent. Um, questionable substitutions, I thought, uh, in the second half when he, th when he brought Jack and Lund Lundstrom off. So, listen, I think that he, he got a lot of things right last night and... The key for Rangers now is to go and try and win it. You know, we spoke we spoke about it before. You know, Barcelona out. You know, Leipzig are a very strong side, but they've already beat a top German team in Dortmund, so I don't think they'll go into that with any fear. And this could end up being a glorious season for Rangers, even if they don't win the league. Can I ask you this? Have you ever? Have you? And I know you're probably going to say yes on several occasions, but I I mean, I looked at Scott Arfield's miss, and I thought to myself, God, if that, I mean, at that point, it could have settled everybody's nerves. I've no missed one like that, I must admit, that was an absolute sitter, I can't believe he's missed that, it's a tap-in really, um, and he just wanted the ground to swallow him up, I know just before that he missed a good chance as well, so yeah. it wasn't a great substitute appearance for Scott Arfield, <laughs> uh, we could have had a couple of goals, but listen, Rangers were comfortable, they won the game comfortably, you know, the, the last five minutes obviously they threw Everton forward, but there were only nine men, Rangers ran out of the game comfortably, but Scott Arfield would be disappointed, he's not scored. Yeah, absolutely brilliant, and thank you to so many people who are talking about uh, Rangers and the performance last night. Um, eventually, it ended up against nine men. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, you make your own luck. You can only deal with what's put in front of you. They were down to ten men, and then there was a stupid red card. I thought the descent from the from the Braga player was just stupid towards the end, Ruffy. Yeah, it's frustration more than anything else. You know, you you you've been very very lucky to go into extra time, and then you get into extra time, and the frustration starts to grow. And sometimes players do something. That's out of character, and uh, I'm sure the rest of his teammates will be disappointed in that. Yeah, Ronnie Porter says anyone who said Roof wasn't as good, if not better, than Morelos just found out last night that there is life without Morelos. Roof is a far better six yard striker than Morelos, he's far quicker. Um, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, uh, the point here is he's not there, he's not available, and, and you're looking at the, the replacements and saying, well, here's your opportunity, that's what you've got to do, you've got to take it. No, I think I think he's Ronnie's right there. I think that Roof is more a six yard predator. You know, he he gets his goals in that six yard box. He's hat trick against St Mun. Every goal is in between the posts. You know, he wants to get in there, he wants to get on the end of things. You need to give him service. He's a striker that strike that thrives on service. Morelos can make something out of nothing sometimes, you know, just by bullying a defender, taking somebody on, getting his shot away. But they're, they're different strikers, but Roof's goal last night was, you know, class roof classic roof. You know, he gets his cell in the six yard box, he gambles. Comes through the, goal, uh, the defender's legs and he taps it in, you know. But if he doesn't make that run, he doesn't doesn't get that chance. So, I think he's more of a more of a six yard box a guy gambles rather than Morelos, who maybe run the channels and bully defenders a wee bit more. Yeah, and, and you couldn't write this, Ruffy. I mean, I look back on uh, Celtic uh, getting to the EFA Cup in two thousand and three, and then you know a lot of people said you'd never see us a Scottish club in a European final again. Then five years later, Rangers get to a UEFA <coughs> Cup final. Uh, and then now we're in a situation where I saw the, the, the graphic last night, the road to Seville, and suddenly Rangers fans will be thinking, get the date and this could be it. Yeah, that, I would take the gamble, you know, if I was a Rangers supporter. Oh, would you book a hotel? Yeah, I would. Oh. Yeah, I'd, I'd book, I'd <laughs> book on go. flights. I mean, we all know that... Uh, once something like that happens, uh, the airlines uh, start tweaking the prices of flights, you know. Yeah. So That's I would, a good point, I, Tom, I, isn't I, it? I would, t I would take a chance, you know, some flights over there or something, 50 quid return. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's worth a gamble, you know, the way Rangers are playing in Europe just now, the way everything's going, everything's falling for them. Uh, I, I certainly would take a chance. And if you don't if you don't get there, it's always a nice place you to You can go. still go and watch Leipzig against somebody in the final. Yeah. Rangers don't win. Well, another thing about I was <laughs> going to say to you is it's such a lovely place just to... Yeah, you can yeah. relax for three or four days yeah, and you can't get place. a ticket. So, uh, nevertheless, would you take the chance? Would you do what Ruffy is saying? Would you book the plane and book the hotel and just fire right over there whether you make it or not? Um, you can give us your thoughts on that one. But nevertheless, congratulations to Rangers. It was a, it was a brilliant game to watch. I mean, the 
atmosphere was sensational. But uh, as far as you know, going one end to the other and wondering what was going to happen, it had you on the edge of your seat. And in the end, uh, I think it was just a bit of justice and the sentiment, of course, that Kimar Roof eventually got a goal that was not going to be chalked off and it proved to be the winner. So uh, well done to Rangers. That's them into the semi-finals. They now know they'll play Leipzig um, because as Hugh mentioned yesterday, Christopher Nkunku is, is, is a big player. Mm -hmm. He scored two for Leipzig. <laughs> they dispatched Atlanta out of the tournament and suddenly they'll meet them in the semi-finals. Yeah, and, and Shu's obviously our German expert and he's already told us, I think he was on, saying that uh, Leipzig had already beaten Borussia twice this year. So, I mean, that says they're, they're a quality side. Uh, but again, you know, <laughs> Rangers have taken on everybody. You know, I, I don't yeah. see anybody that you would fear now, you know, particularly in Europe, because uh, anybody that's been thrown in front of them, they've taken care of in their own way. OK, and what about the other half of the draw? Well, quite simply, uh, last night, West Ham was supposed to be going over to France to be cannon fodder for Lyon. They had uh, the game done and dusted. I mean, there was no way Lyon could possibly lose, but uh, I don't think Dawson Rice or Bowen had read the script. And David Moyes, a Scot who I think a lot of people thought his career was on a downward slope after Manchester United discarded them after a short period of time. Suddenly, he's got them to the semi-finals of the Europa League and everybody is just singing his name. Yeah, what a job he's done at West Ham. I mean, you look at back to his time at Man United, a lot of Man United supporters now will be thinking we should have given him more time. You know, he was he was hounded out of there, really, wasn't he? Yeah. You know, he didn't get a lot of time in there to, to get his own players in, and, and stuff like that, so... Fantastic achievement for West Ham. You get to the semi-final. I think it's a far, far bigger achievement for Rangers. But when you look at the riches that West Ham have got, and it, there's a real possibility now that every European tournament could be won by an English club. Obviously, Leicester beating PSV last night. I watched a bit of that as well. And there's a real opportunity for English football to dominate Europe, and I don't think that's a good thing. You know, but now with the money involved, you know, they're the richest, richest league, richest clubs in the world. You don't want, you know, to be dominated by one, one country. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder who predicted that, Ruffy. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, money talks. Um, one of the things I was going to say uh, is West Ham is a brilliant story, though, because David goes back there. He still hasn't had the millions that other clubs have had, and he's got them in the you know the top half of the table. Over pushing there for a Champions League space, if they w were looking at the Europa League and thinking like Rangers, they'll be thinking they can go all the way. If they win it, they'd be into the Champions League automatically. Yeah, Davey's done remarkably well. He went to West Ham when West Ham were on their downers, you know, and uh, I think we all know that the owners at West Ham are very, very hard people to please, yeah. you know, and he went in there and everybody was saying, oh, we're not too sure, we're not too sure. He's came in and he's done that, but then he's kicked on, you know, and you don't hear anybody now saying that it was a gamble or anything. He's proved the, the, the quality of manager that he is, and as you guys were saying, Man United must be looking at it now and saying, what's happening here? Because... The, the situation that Man United are in just now, there's nobody moaning about who's running that club as a manager-wise. Yeah. You know, the way they were when Davey was there, they were dinning them right away. Well, we knew the inside story, uh, Ruffy, because we'd spoken to David as well, not helped by a very poor chief executive who'd taken over from David Gill, and I, and I think you only have to look at his record over a long period of time to see the countless managers who have not been helped by their strategy. But nevertheless, uh, David Moyes will not care a jot about that. They're going to play Eintracht Frankfurt. And you can always tell when there's a game, Tam, that has a goal that catches you by surprise. And I was watching Barcelona against Eintracht Frankfurt, Ruffy, and I'm thinking to myself, OK, they've gone a goal up, it's an early penalty. And then suddenly, I just jumped out of the chair, Maury, Hits it from about 25 yards into the roof of the net. What a goal! Yeah, Eintracht Frankfurt were brilliant. Now, I'm just flicking back and forth to that game. They How were... many tellies have you got? <laughs> I've got one remote control. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was flicking back and forth because I, th I thought the Rangers game was done as soon as the brag went down to 10 men. So I put it back over to the Barca game and it was, uh, it was so end to end. Hold on a second. You, you, you turned over once brag went down to 10 men? Well, once it went to nothing, I, 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 I turned over. The Rangers have won oh. the tie. OK, well that was confidence, wasn't it, Ruffy? <laughs> nearly, nearly misplaced, but Rangers come through in the end. But no, even even the third goal, you know, the boys left foot across the goalkeeper eh, for 3 nothing, 
And then Barca want to get it back to 3 2. And unfortunately, they just ran, ran out of time because I think if it maybe went another five minutes, Barca would have got the equaliser. Yeah, well, Eintracht Frankfurt will play West Ham. Uh, and David Moyes wants his players now, on the back of what they've achieved, to go in there feeling like favourites. No, we're, we're not favourites. But I want the players to think that they are. I want the players to have great self belief. And I want them to think right from the start of the tournament, I've always thought. The form we were in at the start of the season, I would have taken, taken MD on at that time. Well, fair play to West Ham there in the last four. Um, look at the top goal scorers, Ruffy, in the, in the Europa League. And, and you've got to pay tribute to James Tavernier. Six goals, 11 games, two assists as well. He really has been, and I remember, you know, early in his career, this was a boy that people were questioning. Was he even captain material? Um, you know, there was heavy criticism. I think some of it, uh, I wouldn't say the heavy criticism was justified, but his defensive qualities were put into question as well, whether he had a long-term future. He just got his head down the boy, just kept playing, trying to be the best he can be. You know, from free kicks and his crossing and his goal scoring, you've got to give him 100% credit. Yes, um, in the goal scoring, you know, there's not many full-backs, so that's what you've got to call him, a full-back who is on the edge of the 18-yard box. Oh. So many percent, or fifty percent, of any game. You know, he, he's prepared to go there, and I think they've 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 sussed out now that if he is in that advanced role, somebody's got to cover for him. I think before nobody was covering for him, and that's why people were going, "Oh, nah, he's leaving a big gap, and we're, we're losing goals down there." But certainly, his contribution this year and the goals he's got here, and obviously in the Premiership, and we spoke about it the other day. I, I was struggling for four team, four players for the Player of the Year nomination, but he's certainly jumped into that bracket. Oh, you're, you're throwing him in yeah, there Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. I think okay. he's had a great season. OK, so it's uh, Tavernier for you. Tavernier, and I went for Barry Mackay. Barry Mackay. I haven't got another two yet. You haven't got another two? I'll uh, wait until the semi-finals if somebody will jump Carter in. Carter Vickers has got to be in the four for me. Carter Vickers, Carter I think he's been very how he does it the weekend. What, on one game? Yeah. There you are. You just can't, <laughs> you can't, you can't beat this punditry, can you? Let's, let's, let's decide over Discard the game. previous 30 oh, for the thinker. I know, exactly. Um, the semi-final draw, RB Leipzig versus Rangers, is the first leg on the 28th of April. Now, the reason why I mention that, it's the 28th of April and then Rangers will then head to Celtic Park on the 1st of May with the return leg against um, Leipzig on the 5th of May. What an end to April and into May for Rangers. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Uh, and then, of course, at West Ham against Eintracht Frankfurt. It's the first semi-final for Rangers in 14 years. Here are the odds uh, at this moment, which everybody will be looking towards to thinking, is it worth a wee flutter? Leipzig 11-10. to This will fluctuate as the, the days and hours go on. Uh, West Ham 15-8. to Frankfurt 5-1. to And Tam Rangers 13-2. to yeah, they certainly came in from, I think, 33-1 yeah. um, a month ago. They still had a couple of ties to play, so, you know, I think they're obviously outsiders. I think Leipzig will get into that heavy favourites, you know, to beat Rangers over two legs, but as Rangers showed against Borussia Dortmund, if they're on their game and if they can keep it reasonably tight over in Germany in the first leg, then they would fancy their chances, I think, against anybody at Ibrox. When that, when that place is bouncing, there's not many teams that will fancy coming to Ibrox. Yeah, a couple of million, uh, well, m more than a couple of million banked now as well, Ruffy, which is good going. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, we keep talking about finances at Ibrox, but when you're winning games, you know, you, that seems to go into the back burner. But the people in the in the know will know what it's worth to the club, you know, and, uh, and the, the bigger scale of what they're budgeted for and what they were expecting. And I think... They'll be way, way above what they've expected at the beginning of the season. Yeah, can Rangers win the Europa League? Are they going to defeat Leipzig? Are you going to take the plane and book the hotel uh, even before the semi-final is being played? Is it going to be a chance for David Moyes' West Ham to go all the way? Uh, give us your thoughts on that. We'd love to hear from you. And as Tam alluded to earlier, uh, suddenly there's another English club that stepped up to the plate in the Conference League. Not too sure Brendan Rodgers was all too au fait with the Conference League, but he certainly is now. They've defeated PSV by two goals to one. Roma dispatched four past Bodo Glimp, remember them? Uh, at Sparta Prague won, Feyenoord three, and PAOK nil, Marseille won. So the draw for the semi-finals of the Conference is Leicester against Roma and Feyenoord against Marseille. So all up for grabs there. That's, that's a tough one to call, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, it is, but I, I said I watched a wee bit of Leicester's, they were playing the early game last night away to PSV, they went 1-0 down early doors and 
you know, deservedly come back and win the game. I think they're taking that very seriously now, Leicester. You know, they've nothing really to play for in the league. They're yeah. safe. You know, they'll probably finish tenth or eleventh. I think Brendan Rodgers would love that, not just for his CV, but for his ego to to win a European trophy at Leicester. I think yes. he'd love that. Mm, Brendan with an ego, who'd have thought? Anyway, um, don't forget, uh, we've got a fabulous competition running at the moment. Just before we talk about the Scottish Cup semi-finals, our reporter Kerry has the details of how you can win a very special painting. PLZ Soccer and Geo Thompson have teamed up to offer you this fabulous prize. All you have to do is name your favourite player for Geo to paint a unique and one-off version for you to hang on your wall. It's a simple competition to enter, all you have to do is hit the like and share button, follow us on Facebook or subscribe to the PLZ Soccer YouTube channel to win this magnificent prize. Good luck. Well, it's not, a good, it's not a bad prize, is it, Tom? Oh, I mean, brilliant. No, that, Richard no. Foster says he wouldn't have anybody up on his wall, and then we had to really kind of a, <laughs> turn the screw on him. And, and, and I, I, think, get, I get a feeling sometimes Richard Disney doesn't really like football that much, does he? He just. <laughs> 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 I know. He doesn't want to know, paint anybody, he's not really interested. An, there was an English footballer who was like that as well. Do you remember him? He actually, I think he won he won the Premier League as well with Leeds United. And he said he didn't like football. He said it didn't really, wasn't really bothered, ne neither here nor there. Uh, who's that? Midfielder for Leeds United. David Batty? Yes. Uh. Yeah, absolutely. Good call, Tom. Um, but uh, nevertheless, eventually he said the Brazilian Ronaldo, if you were getting a painting that Gio was oh, painting for you, again, Maradona. Yeah, Maradona. Madonna going up and just the hand of God. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's your chance. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Give yourself an extra chance of winning. You hit the bell, and you'll get notifications of all our unique video content as well. All the stuff that we're posting for you as much as possible. And of course, we give you the managers and the players talking about the games. Uh, so with that in mind, if you download the PLZ Soccer app as well, not only can you get into the shop, you can also get all the news and the good news also is you can actually watch the football show live on your phone so you're not going to miss it and if you do miss it you can still go back to the archive and it will give you uh, the show from that day as well so well worth downloading it but good luck in the competition you can post it in the messages below here on our youtube channel and if you miss that and forget get over to plz soccer's facebook and post it just under the competition video and you'll be in with a chance of winning and we'll announce the winner at the end of next week so good luck with that okay scottish cup semi-final weekend really looking forward to it. two fantastic games doesn't get any better saturday early kickoff hearts against hibs a little bit of trepidation i feel from tam on my right hand side here what do you think is he just a wee bit worried that hearts could hand out a hammering to Hibernian. Well, Sean Maloney says, Hibs have got something to play for and a win would have an effect on their great rivals in the city of Edinburgh. That's what we have to see. I think we can. Um, I think that first 25, 30 minutes was very positive and I think that's been something this uh, last three, four months I've been in. We have seen those moments where we've had periods of, periods of the game that are very good and now it's, it is up to me, uh, my staff and the players to really show that we can sustain it. If we do, then we can we can really shape the narrative of the season. We can also shape the narrative of our biggest opponent's season. And Hearts will know that. Yeah, well, you know, never mind the fact of trying to get to a final. If you do get to the final, you get a chance to not only put one over on Hearts, but maybe have an impact on them financially because if Hearts get to the final, oof, what a kitty of money awaits them. Yeah, it's probably one of the biggest games in Hearts, I'd, say, I'd suggest, history in terms of finance. You know, I think they would go into their last playoff game in the Europa League to get into the group stages against a team that would probably be beatable, to be honest. And then if they lose that, they, get, they drop into the Conference League and they get those group stage games. So it could be anything, you know, there's a lot of people saying three million could be five, six million if they get into the Europa League. So it's an enormous game for Hearts and there'd be nothing better for, Hart, for Hibs and their supporters to, to take that away from Hearts because... Listen, they're your big rivals and you don't want to see them strengthening and having a lot of money going into next season. You know, the Hearts could really push on and become that real third force that Hibs want to be. So it's a huge game. I think the pressure is very much on Hearts. I think they're favourites to go into the game. I said a couple of weeks ago that I thought last week was bigger for Hibs. I think this week is definitely bigger for Hearts when you see what's at stake for them financially. Yeah, if anything, when you're looking at the teams, Jack Ross was trying to build a side as Tam has mentioned on countless occasions, sacked prematurely. Sean Maloney's come in, still building his side. 
but I can see a gap opening up between the two sides, uh, Ruffy, and this for me will just widen it even further. Yeah, I think on the evidence of last week, and you know, that's what that's what we've go, got to go by because that's the immediate game that they played. Forget about all the other games. Yeah, the strength is there with Hearts. I think the second half they bullied uh, Hibs out the game. And if you're in the Hibs camp, you're very apprehensive about this game tomorrow because, I mean, a lot of Hibs supporters don't remember that 5-1 game, you know, and, and the evidence of last week. It could be, I don't think it will be, uh, I would like to think Porteous coming back would, would make them a wee bit more stable at the back. It's a semi-final, but I mean, Hearts are Stonewall favourites for me. Yeah, um, if you're looking for players that can make, uh, well, a, an impact in the game, Certainly Harry Clark is a player that I am well impressed with and he says this is the reason you want to play football, big games like this. So I'd say a lot in these big games, like it's the reason we play football, um, especially for me, like these are the games that you want to play in every week, if, if possible, um, you know, and we've got the opportunity to do it. Yeah, I, I like him as a player, do you, Tom? Very good. I think he's, uh, he was really, really impressive last week at Tynecastle. You know, Hibs were poor on the day, and he was the only one for me that would that got past Mark. So the only one that was trying to rally the troops second half. When they were three one down, he was he kept trying to make things happen. You know, where a lot of guys just chucked it and didn't want the ball. He was wanting to get the ball all the time. So, you know, he can play anywhere. You know, whether he plays at the back or whether he plays him further forward on the left hand side remains to be seen. But he's a terrific player. Uh, you look at the predicted eleven. I mean, it could change. You'll tweak it here and there. Who knows? But what do you make of this side, um, Tam for Hibs um, with the goalkeeper? Um, Macy, Porteous, Hanlon, Doig, uh, not necessarily in that position they're in at the moment there. Cadden, Doyle, Hayes, Newell, Clark, then Wright, Jasper and Melkerson. Any changes? Any yeah, tweet? Jay Wright's injured, so he, he won't be playing. Um, I think that Ewan Henderson will come in and he's got something to prove for me. He's no really hit the set the head on fire that it has so far, but he's still time for him. So I think Henderson will come in for Wright. I think that Louis Stevenson's got to come into the team. You now I, I would play him in the middle of the pitch. And then I would drop Doyle Hayes and I'd play St Stevenson and Newell. And apart from that, I think the rest of the team will be that. That will be the team. But for me, I think Stevenson's got to come into the team. Henderson and there's also maybe there's been some calls for Darren McGregor to come in at the back. Um, but that remains to be seen as well. He's not played for a while, but you need guys in there with experience and steel that can go and be physical against Hearts. Yeah, uh, and as far as Hearts are concerned, no surprise. Uh, you know, a fair bit of confidence here. Robbie Nielsen, you know, this is what Hearts are all about, reaching finals in his eyes. Yes, that's where the club should be. You know, I was lucky enough to play here, play European football, but probably played seven, eight seasons in Europe, but only ever won one cup. You know, and that's, that's what you remember. So the players, when you get into football, you want to win trophies, you want to win leagues. We managed to win a league last year. You know, they've got an opportunity to, to try and get to a final. We've still got a long way to go. But that's what Hart should be. Well, I agree with him. I think, you know, I, I, I like to see both Edinburgh clubs involved in the latter stages of tournaments. And I, and I like his I like, I like his arrogance about it. That's exactly where Hart should be. Yeah, and I've, I've kicked on again for last year. You know, they were the teams in the semi-finals. Although Craig Gordon had a big, big part to play in, in, in where they went with the saves that he made. But in, this, in the evidence of this one, I mean, I know it's a one-off game and that, but it's, it's Hart's top six and Hibs bottom six, you know, that, that's the forum, you know, that's what the forum's been like all year, and so Hibs really have to come up with something that uh, they haven't shown this year, you, definitely in that team you put up there, there's, there's definitely players in there on their day, can win games for you, I like the boy Cadden, you're saying you expect mm -hmm. a wee bit more from him, but he's the kind of guy that gets you into the dangerous positions and then you're looking for somebody in the middle, you know, to take something out of the game, but for me, you know, that result last night just puts hearts on the, the driving seat for me. Yeah, um, thanks for everybody uh, offering their opinion on it. Listen, the teams can change drastically. Gaz thinks, I think Hibs will beat hearts and it'll be a Hibs versus Rangers final, a repeat of 2016, hopefully with uh, not the end of it, where they all exchange pleasantries. Same result would do. Yeah, well, you'd be happy with that, wouldn't you? Um, uh, as far as a player that I'm surprised you haven't mentioned, Ruffy, who should be, I think, in the running for Player of the Year as well. Certainly a nominee is Craig Gordon. Um, he's mm -hmm. been talking about the fact that, you know, he looks around the dressing room and the players they have and what they've been achieving, they're really confident of, of, of getting to a final. We, uh, we want to make it a, a happy one this time, but we, yeah, we, we go there knowing that we can 
we can do it. We've been there before. We've won semi-finals before. Um, and this is the next one. We, we want to try and take it that stage further. I like Craig Gordon, Ruffy. I think he's a great goalkeeper. I think I think it's just a brilliant signing by Hearts. So mm-hmm. positive about them making the move to bring him back to Tyne Castle. And, and he hasn't let them down. No, and everybody talks about goalkeepers and many points they get you a year. You know, and what they do in cup games and big games, they make the saves and, and Craig does that. He makes the saves. A lot of them are very unorthodox, you know, but he makes them. You know, he gets his, his arm or his, his wrist are in, in the right position and he, the experience that he's got. We saw it with Scotland as well, some of the saves he made there. And when you've got somebody like that behind you, you've got to feel confident. You've got to say, well, to beat our goalkeeper, you've got to do something special. Yeah, um, here's what we think might be the predicted hearts loving. Could change every now and then. Somebody picks up a knock here and there. Uh, Gordon and Goal, Sibick, Halkett, Kingsley, Atkinson, Haring, Halliday, Cochrane, Mackay, Boyce, and Sims. Uh, Tam, I liked Halliday's attitude when he walked in to get the uh, after match interview in the, in the sponsors' lounge when he was walking in with a limp, obviously. The, the money from his win bonus was weighing him down. <laughs> um, he could have actually said, I've got a couple of Hibs players in that pocket and that's why I'm walking with a limp as well. But he was he was great. Mackay's been just like a Rolls Royce for them. Yeah, uh, Andy Hardy, you know, he takes a lot of abuse of most away supporters. You know, and, and the Hibs fans were giving them it tight. And as a player, you're, I've been in that situation myself. The best thing to do is to score and shut them up. And they've done that twice. No, so he'll be bouncing, he'll be looking forward to the game tomorrow. Um, Barry Mackay, again, excellent player, caused Hibs problems in the second half. But the big difference for me last week was strikers. You know, Mel- Melkerson's a young kid, he's developing, he's still, you know, he's got a lot of growth to do. It's difficult to ask him to lead the line. You've got two really experienced, big, strong strikers up there for Hearts, Sims and Boyce, and that is going to be a key battle for me tomorrow. The Hibs back three, how can they handle, you know, the physical attributes of Boyce and Sims? You know, the both of them are big and strong, they can run in behind. You know, and they bullied the, the Hibs defence last week. So that is, for me, the area that the game's going to be won and lost tomorrow. Yeah, 11 to 10 hearts, Ruffy. 9 to 4 the draw after 90 minutes. And then Hibs at 5 to 2. I can't believe 11 to 10 hearts. You know, I think <laughs> a lot of heart supporters will be charging to the bookies as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> 11 to 10 after your team's just won 3-1 the week before. I would, I would have thought it'd been four to five or something like that. Yeah. Well, it's cha- it'll change all the way. I've been, I've been on every bookies you can think of to try and see, you know, the odds and mm-hmm. they fluctuate here and there. But that's the ones I got. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I think the heart supporters will be more than happy with that. I yeah. think that the odds will tumble very, very quickly. Okay. Um, what about the other semi final? What's happening there? It's Sunday. It's at Hamden. It's Rangers against Celtic. Our reporters been out at the National Stadium. Here's Kerry Pollock. Two o'clock this Sunday, Rangers and Celtic will go head to head in the semi finals of the Scottish Cup. Last season, Rangers put an end to Celtic's Cup campaign after a 2 0 win at Ibrox. Rangers then went on to play Cup winners that year, St Johnston, who put the Glasgow side out on penalties. But Celtic boss Ange Postacoglu will be hoping his side can advance to the final, where they'll meet either Hibernian or Hearts for the chance to go for his first Scottish Cup as manager. We don't think we're going to go out there on, on Sunday and, and because you know Rangers had a sort of uh, a big game last night that they're going to be something less than what they can be. We, we'll go out there preparing to, for them to be the best they can be as we have in every game. But standing in his way will be Giovanni Van Bronckhorst and his men and of course with half of Hamden on their side, Rangers will be hoping this Scottish Cup will be one to remember. We're going to give uh, everything also on, on Sunday. It's a big game again and all the, ga- the games are who are coming are big, but of course the semi cup uh, against Celtic, you want to uh, you want to win and to play the final. It's the old firm this Sunday. The streets will be flooded with supporters, but there's only room for one in that all important final. And a derby like no other is just too tough to call. Yeah, too tough to call for Kerry, but we, we're going to have to call it. Um, Rangers against Celtic. Okay, let's get the cliche out of the way. Will they be tired? No, I don't think they will. I think they'll get a boost from the from the result last night, you know, the fact they're in the semi-finals. As a football player, for me, you don't get tired when you're winning games and you're doing well. And Rangers are doing well at the minute, particularly in Europe. Um, they'll rest up today, they'll get, in, they'll get a massage, they'll, they'll relax. You know, tomorrow there's maybe a wee bit light session, they'll be ready to go on Sunday. So I don't think they'll be tired at all. I think you, you can't be tired in old firm game. As soon as you walk out that tunnel and you, see, you look to your, your, your left and you see the Rangers support there, uh, 25,000 there, it gets the blood, the blood pumping and you'll be ready to go again. So I don't think they'll be tired, but I, I do think that Celtic are a better team. 
and that's why I think Celtic will win. Yeah, oh, you've got early. Hey, calm your jets. He, he's right yeah. in there now. He's steaming right in. Um, Barisic with a bit of cramp, but two things. I thought Barisic coming back last night was a great move because mm-hmm. he puts in such a great cross. I also think Roof is now at that point where he, as Tam said, if you're winning, if you've big games like that, Roof should be walking out there with his chest puffed out thinking, mm-hmm. I, 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 this is the stage that I should also be able to step up and score goals. Yeah, I think uh, the confidence that they've got for the, the, the goals, the goal that he got last night, we'll, we'll take it on to the weekend. Parashik is another one like Tavernier, you know, he gets into the 18 yard area and he, he throws some tremendous balls into the box. The the big difference for me is with Tavernier and Barisic is they've got two wingers they've got to deal with. They've got Jota and Labada, you know, so they're not going to be charging forward the way they usually do against other teams because the wide areas where Celtic are are the wide areas that's going to hurt you. So they have to be disciplined in what they're doing. Yeah, I think Labada is a Puerto Rican <laughs> dance. Um, Abada, though. Labada. He, he could... <laughs> <laughs> He's brilliant, isn't he? I love him. Oh, I will never, <laughs> ever. Get you, tired you knew as soon as you said it. Oh, oh, yeah. Lambada. Who no, was it? it was Lambada. Oh, right. But the Lambada, I'm thinking he's got to be another dance. Oh, that's a wee guy who sang it. Yeah, the Lambada. Uh, mm, I can't remember. Richie Sunday. Anyway, I'm just trying to. Doesn't matter. Um, oh, that. Richie Sunday. It could, it could have been something like. Somebody will tell us. All right. Um, but nevertheless. My point was, is, there'll be two wide men. Yeah, yeah. In, dancing. In the, in the areas, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's the. I don't think it's too difficult to work out maybe what the Rangers are living. He might tweak it here and there. Somebody might have just uh, picked up a strain. But here's the Rangers McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Balligan. Bassey, um, that for me might be tweaked. Jack Lundstrom, Aribo, Ramsey, Roof, and Ken. I, I, I think maybe um, would he go Bassey in the centre position and put Barisic out there again? I mean, Possibly. That's his that's his option, isn't it? He's, yeah. You know, you'll, you'll see how the how the guys are this morning. You know, if there's anybody carrying knocks or injuries or anything like that. I mean, Aribo's. Uh, I've got to mention Aribo. Um, I thought he was, you know, looking at his best again. Kent, you know, there's something just infuriate me about Ryan Kent at the moment. All the ability in the world. These are, these are the games where I think he should be ripping it up. He flatters the deceive for me a wee bit. You know, he, he's flashy. You know, he'd be a great YouTube player. You know, he, he does things that are unbelievable. But then you, you don't see him for 30, 40 minutes in the game, and then he'll pop up again. So he's got, to, he's got to add more consistency to his game in terms of goals and assists because he's capable of doing it. But he goes missing at times for me in games, and I don't. I think that's probably stopping him from going. To the, to the higher level, maybe going to the English Premiership. But yeah. it's noticeable when, when the likes of Kent and Aribo are not performing, Rangers levels drop. You know, they rely on these big players producing the goods, and that's when they are good. And if they turn up and produce the, the level of performances we know, it's going, to, it's going to be a great game. Look at the two. So, so Peter's not put up the Celtic team yet, but that's yeah. a wonderful Rangers team. You know, it's a really good Rangers team. It's not a weak team. And when you put the Celtic team up, they'll be the same. So it'll be two two teams really going for it. Yeah. Um, listen, the band was called Kioma. Oh. Uh, it was the Lambada. Thanks, Cheryl. Cheryl's our uh, digital journalist. She says, uh, Loala Braz was the lead vocalist, which, oh. believe me, <laughs> you are nowhere near that. You were probably thinking of Enrique Iglesias. I'm thinking about <laughs> but, it. Was uh, film, it was a film, wasn't it? Oh. That was the song. Was that right? Uh, that um, anyway, song, apart from it. Apart from Richie, anything. someday, someday, come on, come on. All right, OK. Um, apart from anything else, um, Rangers, what do you think? Can you uh, not only replicate what happened last night, can you go there on Sunday and the energy level's still high and defeat Celtic to take your place in the Scottish Cup final? If you're a Rangers fan, give us your point of view on that. Uh, well, what about Celtic? Well... You know, you've got Kyogo back, Turnbull and Forrest, Giacomakis, maybe not this week, but back for next week, according to Ange Postecoglou. Uh, but suddenly you've got the key players back. If Rangers are on a high from last night, Celtic are refreshed and they've got that feeling that, you know, nobody is going to stand in their way. Again, I think Celtic will take massive confidence from, from beating Rangers at Ibrox a couple of weeks ago. I think when you play a team, you know, twice in close succession, you know, like Hearts and Hibs, I think if you go into that game knowing that you've beat them, I think that gives you that inner confidence that you know you can do it. And, you know, I think that Celtic went into that with the confidence, you know, the confidence of beating Rangers, the confidence of winning trophies, 
You know, I think a lot of those Celtic players have won trophies at Celtic. A lot of Rangers players have not won a lot, of, a, a lot of trophies, a lot of silverware in the last three or four years, obviously, the, the league last season. But I think Celtic's record in cup competitions is absolutely phenomenal. And I think they'll get into that, you know, expecting to win as well. Predicted 11, Ruffy. Uh, if you have a look and see, uh, it's been fairly straightforward. <coughs> I beg your pardon. Hart, Juranovic, Carter, Vickers, Starfelt and Taylor. <coughs> Excuse me. Rogic, McGregor, Hatate, Jota, Maida, Kyogo. Could be a badder. Who knows? What do you make of that starting lineup? Yeah, I think middle to front, as they have been all... All season they're frightening, you know. We know Rodrick's a big, big match player. You know, semi-finals, finals. He seems to turn it on. We know what Hatati can do. McGregor's been a wonderful player all season, but it's the three up front. You know, the pace and the drive that they've got that will cause Rangers uh, trouble. You know, particularly in possession. Uh, it'd be interesting to see at the end of the day who's got the most possession in that game. And if it's if it's Celtic, uh, I would expect them to win the game. Kyogo is the manager at it. He says he, he's maybe not fit enough to do 90 or 120 minutes. He came on for the 7-0 against St. Johnson, set up the goal. Is he just playing a little bit of mind games I here? Is he firing in all cylinders ready I, for it? I don't think he'll be 100% peak because he's not been playing. You mm. know, But I think, particularly when you look at Maida, you know, the engine he's got and the energy he's got, I think the Japanese lads are very, very fit. And I don't think they take a lot of tuning up, you know, in terms of getting games. So I think Kyogo will come into the team and I think he'll terrify Rangers at the back. I was at the League Cup final against Hibs when Kyogo scored the two goals and I, I was astonished with his movement. You know, I was watching him at times rather than the game. You know, he was peeling off the side of players and his movement for the goal. You know, he'd take a step and then ran him behind for the one he loved, the goalkeeper. So if he's fit and firing, he's going to terrify Rangers because he can he can go in behind and I think that's... That's a weakness for the Rangers centre defence when somebody goes and runs in behind them with pace. Yeah. Um, well, uh, listen. Before I get the overall prediction, it's Celtic, uh, eleven to ten, the draw thirteen to five after ninety minutes, fourteen to five Rangers. Um, I mean, listen, <laughs> you, could, you could go across a million bookies on this one, Ruffy. Um, it's it's such a great call. I am so looking forward to this one because of the fact that there's there's no. Uh, Rangers might be flat from losing in the Europe. They're not. They're high as a kite. Celtic are refreshed. They're ready. They're chasing uh, what they believe is a treble. Um, it's just it's just set up brilliantly. Yeah, there's, a, there's everything up for stake for both sets of supporters. And they'll take everything, uh, the result of this game, as most, most supporters do in derby games. You know, and, and whoever wins it is going to get an unbelievable lift with everything that's coming uh, in the rest of the season. I'm not saying that the, the, the team that gets beat will go into a shell and, and throw everything out the window, but th th this is a big talking point for supporters when these two meet together, and particularly when one gets the benefit of the other. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and the one thing that I always, um, I always mention is the fact that you want fans to go there and enjoy the game. It's one of those days where you go out, hopefully it's you know good weather, go to the game, enjoy it, go back with your mates, just go back somewhere safe um, and the last thing you want is any trouble that's definitely not something we want on the agenda the reason why this is a fantastic derby to look forward to is the fact that um, well is the fact that basically none of the two clubs can stick their oar in when it comes to the supporters it means you can get a proper derby so this is a proper derby Tam because there will be a huge away support a huge home support depending on who's been picked out of the draw first but it's 50-50 yep that's what we want to see you know we've, uh, uh, me personally I've missed that at Parkhead and Ibrox the full away support I don't think that adds to the spectacle of the game you know and it's disappointing that both clubs have no came together and sorted that out yet I don't think it's I think that's going to rumble on uh, for a while now but it's great that tomorrow there'll be what 20 25,000 of each at the yeah. game and uh, you know it's it made the best team win on Sunday you know and that, that's what it's all about it'll be the same tomorrow with Hearts and Hibs so it's a fantastic weekend hopefully a showcase for Scottish football yeah you get about 20,000 of what I would call the the, the real, real dad, supporters the real supporters and then there's the 5,000 on each side yep. who are what I call the roughies you know, the hobnobbers who get a starter, a main course and a suite. He was just telling me the day that he's looking forward to getting his two tickets for Scotland for Ukraine. His freebies because he's in the Hall of Fame. 
Yeah, well, listen, yeah, you got, Tom, you've got to suck that up, son. That's just the nature of it when you're in the when you're in the company of greatness. You just have to suck that up, as I have done. He wasn't that great today at the golf, I must oh, say. Absolutely. Because listen, every me and my wee pal Barry smashed him and him and Craig Young. We absolutely see, slaughtered them six and five. See, when you get your chance, Tom, you've got to wallow in that type of thing. Yep. You know, I'm yeah. waiting for my chance at the tennis, and when it comes. I will be absolutely all over every bit of social media. Anyway, apart from anything else, okay. Um, uh, I'll just <clears throat> I'll just say to Sean um, that Sean's just blamed Rangers for these ticketing issues. Um, Sean, it's not a tip for tat. It started with Tam's club at Hibs, and then everybody just steamed mm -hmm. in. And the good thing is the SFP are calling this, which is why we don't need the pettiness from Celtic and Rangers. All the fans, hopefully, can the ones yeah. that want a ticket will enjoy it. Yeah, and we hope at the end of the day, the the pairs that be at both clubs will appreciate, you know, what a spectacle it is, you know, with both sets of fans there and what it brings to the game as well, you know, and and hopefully they'll get round the table and and have some kind of discussion, you know, to get us back to where we were. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be colourful. It will be red, white, and blue. It'll be green, white, and gold. Give us your prediction. Three one to Celtic. <coughs> Three one Celtic. Ruffy. Two one Celtic. Uh, okay. Yours, Peter? I think it'll be 2 1 Celtic, and I think it'll be, again, um, I'm going to go for I'm going, I'm going for 3 1 Hearts again. I think it's a double whammy. No, I think Hibs are going to win. I just, there's, something, there's something deep inside me. Is it just a gut feeling with no real backup no, of evidence? No, no, it is. It's, there's no evidence that <laughs> Hibs can beat Hearts. Is that seat? Is <laughs> I that seat? I Anybody who sits there? I don't think Hibs have ever beat Hearts at Hamden, but there's going to be a first for Everton, and tomorrow that's going to be it. So the high bees are going to do them 2 1. Yeah, wow. Wow. Ruffy, Hugh McDonald sat there yesterday and he said, I'm looking at the evidence. There's absolutely no structure to my thought. I've just got a hunch that Hibs will win. And you as a, he is a Yoda. Yes. He knows his stuff, big like you, <laughs> all you. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the two people who have made these predictions and I'm looking at our prediction chart and they're way below us. Yeah. So, <laughs> the gut feeling's not going to work in this one. That's why he's doing where he's up. Yeah. So, no, I think on the evidence of last week, I think Hearts, particularly with that three, you know, Mackay, Boyce and Sims, uh, if, you, if you had the three in the Hibs, uh, team, I probably went for Hibs, but it's hearts for me. Yeah, okay, um, we shall see on this one. Uh, thanks to so many people who've uh, offered their tuppence worth on how they think it's going to go. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I love uh, I love some of the messages that come in, some of them a bit of banter, uh, some of them with the uh, score predictions as well. Uh, over and above that, um, enjoy the games if you're. <laughs> you're obviously not reading them. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's there's one there's no there's one there, and, and Marlon's usually quite sensible, um, <laughs> but he's just he's just Marlon's just said that I've turned turned round to somebody and says, why don't you just go and. Yes, <laughs> Marlon. Uh, you know, you know me. I, I wouldn't use choice language, lab. But every now and then, we don't mind getting battered ourselves, Ruffy. But every now and then, you've got to throw a, a baseball bat out there to to some people. But it's it's good fun. Listen, if you give it out, you've got to take it in. But providing, of course, um, it's not abusive. And you know, listen, we could say that from now until doomsday. But on Saturday and Sunday. There are a few people, we all know, who don't conduct themselves properly, but let's hope people go to the game and go home without suffering any uh, physical harm. Some people will suffer abuse. We can only shout from the high heavens about the decent people that go and watch their club and love it and cuddle their mates. I don't know about you, Tam, but going to these matches, there's nothing better if you go there with your pals and there's a goal he wouldn't he wouldn't know anything about this but you know <clears throat> your mates and they go there and the banter's great and then if a goal scored you get to jump on your mate's head and sometimes <laughs> you know you're cuddling people that you would never even hang about with no i'm telling these two games you know they're yeah. too big rivalries so anyway, that's just the press box <laughs> i was jumping in front of the beside the wee guy for hibs tomorrow if hibs scored but no nah. Listen, two huge games, two big rivalries, <coughs> uh, Edinburgh Derby, Old Firm Derby and everything at stake. You know, and Celtic will be looking, to, if they win this game, they'll be massive favourites to win the treble. And Ange Postacoglu's first season, Rangers will want to stop them and try and win their first cup for a long time, so it's a, a lot to play for. Yeah, absolutely. OK, a couple of quick things. Thanks to um, Sh Cheryl, this was sent to us by someone on Facebook. We were talking about it yesterday, when we were talking about the magazines that you used to read, the Shoot magazine. 
and and the shoot magazine had these player features, player profiles, focus on, and then they'd say, you know, your name, your car you drive, your favourite food and all this. So uh, the bold roughies picture has been sent to us. When was this? When, when, when was well, this? well I can tell by the, but by the looks of the, the shirt, it's round about 78, because the umbro and the shirt down the sides. It might, it might be later, who knows? But anyway, Ruffy, <laughs> um, six foot one, and, and here's, this is the great one, weight, 13 stone 2, which by the way, <laughs> Shallow Hal, when he looks in the mirror, still thinks he's, he still thinks he's 28 and 13 stone 2. Um, married, uh, won't mention that, she's gone. Um, but uh, <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> he, he, he drives, he drives a Fiat 1.9. Who buys a Fiat when you're a that professional was a football? Car. That was a oh, sports was that a good one? Is that the convertible roof where you press oh, the button? Oh, was it? Is it? Off, yeah. Big show off, mm -hmm. um, which is, well, convertible, that's why your hair's thinning. Favourite players, Peter Shilton, Colin McAdam. That was just a line up because Colin's my pal. <laughs> <laughs> came up through the ranks together right. and he eventually played it. Favourite other team, Liverpool. F most difficult opponent, Joe Harper. Yeah. Joe Harper? Yeah, I got Joe Harper. Joe Harper, but more difficult than Dixie Deans, who put six past you yeah, one well, day. I got Joe Harper at the World Cup in Argentina. We played Aberdeen three times and he scored about 12 goals. Right. And <laughs> <laughs> most memorable match, no surprise, uh, Wales against Scotland, 77. Winning the League Cup with Thistle, which is fine. Um, biggest disappointment, Argentina, <laughs> you and me both. Uh, best country visited, Brazil. Uh, your favourite, oh, uh, here's Brazilian. one. Favourite food, what's his favourite food? Chinese. Steak. Steak. Uh, and uh, golf and tennis hasn't changed. And miscellaneous dislikes, uh, Tam, smoking and boring people. Ooh, that's a that wide-ranging one, eh? That's never unbelievable. Smoked, roughly, never, never smoked. Never, no. nah, never. Uh, Faulty Towers, Porridge and all sports programmes. And his favourite singers, ELO and the Beatles. And here it is, the one I've been waiting for. Favourite actress, see if you can guess. Favourite... Think about his time. Attractive women. Think, think about his time. Oh, Sophia Loren. No, oh, oh you're in that bracket. You're you 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 well there. Racco Welsh. Oh, uh, there you are. Well done, Ruffy. Anyway. James Bond. No, she was, James Bond. No, no, no she wasn't. Uh, I think that Ursula Andress when she yes, comes out the ocean. She comes out the yeah. Yeah. Uh, Inverness, K K uh, Cali Thistle against Kamarnock. Who's winning it? Uh, Kamarnock, I hope. Uh, that's just for personal reasons, you know, that uh, Inverness have got a game in hand of us. But as I've told you before, you know, there's a lot of money at stake as, as you come down. Uh, but hopefully it's between us and them for third and fourth place. And yeah. fourth, third place for us would mean maybe 90, 100,000 pounds. So. If Kilmarnock win that one, it gives us a chance to maybe get third place if we do something against Wraith Rovers tomorrow. Yeah. I would go Kilmarnock. I think Inverness have went off the rails a wee bit. They know that draw they had last week against Air United was disappointing right. for them. Any chance you can do us a favour? Our reporter, yeah. Kerry, is going to be there at Partick Thistle. So, oh, uh, tea and a pie, Oh, please. tea and I'll, I'll go even further than that. I'll get her something better than that. OK, fantastic. Uh, a rosette and a programme. Uh, what do you think, Inverness, Cali? Kelly. Hey, come on, that one, hopefully. Okay, uh, fine. Um, well done to. <laughs> That's a personal thing. <laughs> <laughs> come on, that. Well, well, <laughs> well done to. Uh, well done to uh, Keith Lasley. He starts his new job as chief operating officer. I think there's. I'm not, not listening. It's on well with uh, Stephen Robinson. So this is. This is good. Tony Fitzpatrick's obviously retiring, and this is a role where I think he might take on a bit of a director of football as well. Yeah, there'll be a, a bigger brief than that. You know, I mean, yeah. St. Martin won't be employing a lot of people to do a lot of different things, and I think Laz covers most of the bases and identifying players, maybe other teams, things like that. So I think it's a great gig for him. Yeah, eight games left. Burnley have sacked Sean Dyche. I'm, I am gobsmacked with it. Um, it's it's incredible when you think of his budget and just what he's achieved to keep Burnley in the Premier League in England. Uh, you know, a pittance, but a huge reward financially. I cannot believe they're sacking him with eight games. He deserves better than that. And for that, I'm going to put on my pettiness head. I'm going to be petty about it. I hope Burnley get relegated. So do I hope they get relegated. I think that's a shocker. I think that that guy... More than anyone in that league deserves a bit of loyalty. You know, they've he's kept him in that division, as you said, against all the odds for season after season. You know, they spend nothing, and to sack him when they look as if they're, they're not automatically down yet. They're, they look as if they're going to go down, but 
to sack him now, I think is absolutely disgraceful and it shows you there's no loyalty whatsoever in football. They just run. Yeah. These owners are just they're just money orientated. They're thinking yeah, about the, the money they're going to lose. I, I don't think they, they realise the bigger picture. I mean, obviously they're saying, well, sack him, we'll bring somebody in. Big Sam. And we'll, and we'll get another aye, some, and we'll get another reaction. But I think because, I mean, I don't know the guy personally, but I, I would have thought he would be very well liked within that dressing room. And I don't care who you bring into that dressing room, I don't think you'll get the same response to the players that he would be getting at this moment. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I was gobsmacked when I, when I saw that um, today. Uh, here's the English Premier League fixtures that you can look forward to if you're going to watch some of the English Premier League as well. Um, Tottenham, Brighton, Man United, Norwich, uh, Watford against Brentford, Southampton, Arsenal, Newcastle take on Leicester, West Ham against Burnley. Uh, both those two games I mentioned there are on the Sunday. And then the FA Cup Saturday at half past three, it's Man City against Liverpool and Chelsea against Crystal Palace. Liverpool still chasing the quadruple. Yep, two great games, two great uh, semi-finals and hopefully tomorrow doesn't go extra time in penalties, Hibs can win in 90 minutes and they can get back up the road, sit down with a cold beer and watch Man City against Liverpool yeah. at half three. OK, on this day, 15th of April 1970, Ruffy was one of the biggest attendances, attendances ever at Hamden Park, 136,505 who paid... It's probably another, it's probably another fifty thousand in there who got a lift over. Um, Celtic beat Leeds United to reach the European Cup final. What a night that was! I was there. Were you? Yep, I was there that night. Yep. Did you get a program? Yep. No, I didn't get a program. Where were you then, Ruffy? Uh, I don't know. You were fifteen. I was fifteen or something. Yeah. My dad took me to the left took me to that game. They left you. No, I think we paid for it, but uh, yeah. it was an amazing night, absolutely. And when the goals went in, I mean, the just the scenes there were just. You wouldn't have thought you could go 100 and, what did you say, 36? 1,500. Was, was there a big rush, like, when the goal went in? Was it, it was just jam-packed. Just the noise, just the whole, the, the place. I mean, they talk about the Hamden Roar, and that was only supposed to be international games, like Scotland versus England, but that particular night, it was just amazing. Did they just play at Hamden because well, there was a big attendance? I think the demand uh, like, for it was phenomenal, but uh, I'll tell you one thing, Ruffy, do you, uh, it's difficult to remember all that, all those years ago. Do you remember? What the sound was like when Billy Bremner scored that raker. Yeah, it was silence, right, silence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then Bobby Murdoch. Yep. Bobby Murdoch. Well, that was another screamer. You know, it was it's just one of these nights. He, you, 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 oh, I was only young at the time. I can't remember much about it now. But yeah. certainly, as a night, you know, the hundred and thirty-six thousand people. And, I mean, and, and, just... and Terry Cooper certainly remembered uh, Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, he certainly. Did. He, he went by him a couple of times, and went back and had him again, and, <laughs> and tried him again. And <laughs> his head was absolutely burning. <laughs> <laughs> had him in the waltzers, wee Jinky. I've seen yeah. the video. Absolutely, yeah. it's uh, it's one of those unbelievable memories. Um, I think there's also there's certain events in history where you you know exactly where you were. Um, when something sad happens, uh, and certainly I know exactly where I was watching the television pictures uh, in disbelief at what was happening on the 15th of April 1989, eventually at Hillsborough in that semi-final between uh, Liverpool and Nottingham Forest. 97 Liverpool fans lost their life as a result of uh, the crush there that day, overcrowding on the terraces. Um, and of course, uh, I think in the forthcoming years, a lot of Liverpool fans suffered a lot of pain, not only for the loss of loved ones, but for some of the accusations that were made against them, which were quite simply scandalous. And there was lots of Liverpool fans who fought and fought for justice, uh, and they finally got it. Uh, it's the worst sporting disaster uh, in football in the UK. And at an inquest later, uh, the ruling was that the fans were unlawfully killed. Um, and I think the people who fought for the justice uh, deserve all the credit. The players, Kenny Dalglish, um, I think, was someone that will never be forgotten in the city of Liverpool, how he managed to just rally around so many people. That's why he's called King Kenny. But for the families who lost their loved ones, nobody will ever forget the 97. From everyone here, thanks for watching.